delighted, guys, because we have a very special treat for you. Um, our own area leader, Paul Jew, is going to come up and share with us. He deserves more than a golf clap. Come on. <laughs> for 14 years, 14 years, do I have that right? And without audacious leadership and vision, we wouldn't be where we are today. Uh, God is moving in Albuquerque in many different ways, and it takes special people like Paul keeping us rolling and looking to see where God is moving. And I'm very proud to be a part of this organization and, and working with people who breathe rare air and like fall. So Paul, would you like to come up and would y'all give him another really warm welcome? Can we get the slides up? So I have the unenviable task of being the last speaker at the conference. And I've been to enough of these to know that the last speaker gets the the raw end of everything. Uh, first of all, they usually have to follow somebody great, which has happened already with Jeremy and Jerome. Uh, second of all, it's usually when people are really tired and they just want to get out of here and get to their weekend. So uh, we're going to change things up. At the end of today's talk, if you hang around, there will be a raffle for a new car. <laughs> so anyway, that's... Um, this is a picture of my grandma, and uh, you know, one of the great Christian concepts that we've heard of is uh, speaking the truth in love, and the reason why I wanted to put my grandma's picture up here is I think that she was the very best at that of anybody that I knew, and to give you an example of that, uh, one year uh, we were having Thanksgiving dinner at my aunt's house, and I have a very large extended family. And I found myself sitting across the table from my grandmother. And she hadn't seen me for several months. And she noticed that I had changed a little bit since I'd last seen her. And um, one of the things that uh, really has struck with me is she said three words to me that I will never forget. Um, she just looked at me, she smiled, and she said, you fat, honey. <laughs> So, you know, I, I really learned a great lesson from that, that if you, uh, if you just look at somebody eye to eye and smile and you end the sentence with honey, you can say just about anything to anybody. <laughs> so that's just a great principle about how to speak the truth in love. You know, it's a little bit uh, unusual because uh, people ask me all the time, you know, I'm, I'm this Chinese guy who grew up in Albuquerque, and my last name was Jew, J-E-W. I'm, I'm, I'm an anomaly wrapped inside an enigma, basically. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Some Chinese guy named Jew who's involved in a Christian ministry. So, uh, so anyway, I want to tell you a little bit about that story. When my father immigrated to this country in 1939, he was 15 years old. This is a picture that was taken of him when he was in the Army. And uh, his, uh, he was processed at Angel Island off the coast of San Francisco. And the immigration officer asked him, what is your name? And actually, this is the, the Chinese character for our name. And for whatever reason, the immigration officer said, well, that sounds like Jew to me, J-E-W. So the, the same Chinese character, depending upon the immigration officer, will give it all sorts of different spellings. You can see Jew, J-U-E, Chu, Cho, whatever. Uh, so uh, that's how I got my name, Jew. That's how a Chinese guy got to be uh, named Jew. So, you know, one of, the, one of my best friends is uh, Gloria Lou Salazar. They are funeral directors for Reflections in uh, Salazar Mortuary. And I said, you know, one of the things that I'd like to have on my headstone just to mess with people is I want it to look like this. Paul Jew, the Jew who loved Jesus. <laughs> anyway. That's what I that's what I hope to have. This is uh, this is uh, the restaurant that my grandparents and my 
parents owned on Central Avenue just off of San Mateo. It was called the New Chinatown Restaurant. And uh, that pink stucco building, I have lots of childhood memories from there because I, I spent many a night working as a pantry boy, a, uh, a bus boy, and a dishwasher at this restaurant. And um, when I was eight years old, this is a picture of me, not when I was eight years old. This is, uh, <laughs> it's all downhill from there. <laughs> So uh, when I was eight years old, I remember watching TV one night, and I was watching a, um, a Billy Graham crusade. And many of you who uh, grew up in the 60s and 70s probably watched one of the Billy Graham television specials. And I remember at the end of every television special that uh, Billy Graham did of his crusades, he'd do an altar call. And oftentimes he'd call everybody up to say the prayer, and I remember saying the prayer to accept Christ as my Savior when I was eight years old, watching television uh, as an eight-year-old kid. Uh, so I began walking with the Lord as an eight-year-old kid, and I went to church um, at a place, this is, this is the old Grace Church building on Cedar Street. Some of you are familiar with it. Uh, it's been taken over by Presbyterian Hospital. It's since been vacated about 20 years. And I used to go to Sunday school every morning at Grace Church on Cedar Street. And, um, one of the things that, uh, that happened was, was that it was my brother's job to take us to Sunday school every morning. He, uh, he was the only one that had a driver's license at the time. He was six years old than I am. And one of the things that, that occurred was uh, when he was 17, he rebelled. And he said, I don't want to go to church anymore. And then consequently, my rides to church stopped as well too. And this put me on a 24 year journey where I drifted away from the Lord. For, for about 24 years. I, uh, I went to Albuquerque Public Schools. Is John here? I don't know if he's. I, I found another El Emerson Elementary <laughs> fellow student, but I went to elementary, El Emerson Elementary, then near junior high school, graduated from this school, Highland. Are there any Highland graduates here? All right, Mary Ellis. <laughs> Yay, Hornets, all right. Um, <laughs> congratulations. So I, I ended up graduating from Highland, and uh, I applied to uh, the University of California system. And um, the reason why I applied there was because there was a girl that I kind of liked in high school who was applying there, and it turned out I got in and she didn't. Uh, so I, I go to this, um, I go to this school. It's called the University of California Irvine, and uh, this was the day before my graduation. Uh, this is uh, my mom and my dad and my and from San Francisco. And I remember the very first day that I was a freshman in, in uh, college, I took a humanities class. And it was the very first class that I'd ever taken. And there was an atheist professor who just started talking about how illogical it was that uh, there was a, a God. He said, if God was all good, if God was all powerful, all knowing, uh, how come there's so much suffering? And being an impressionable a freshman, I basically bought into that argument, hook, line, and sinker, and that just kind of deepened my drift away from the Lord. So um, anyway, I end up getting a bachelor's degree in psychology, a master's in business at UC Irvine, and when I was in graduate school, uh, I met a lady that I, I fell in love with, and uh, about um, two years after dating, we got married. This is uh, Judy and, and me and my parents and her parents. We got married in the church even though we weren't walking with the Lord at the time. But uh, anyway, this, is, uh, this was uh, after our wedding. So this is 1983 when we get married. And uh, I, has, I was working in a market research company in Santa Ana, California. Uh, Judy was working at William Sonoma at the South Coast Plaza Mall. Anybody familiar with those places? <laughs> So, oh well. Um, and uh, my brother, uh, Kim, who had a photography studio that he started in 1976, uh, called me and he said, I would really like for you to be the business manager for my studio because I really could use your help uh, with organizational structure and all those things that you learned in business school. So I'm hoping that you'll move here and take over the business side of, of, of the studio. Uh, I think the thing that sounded appealing to me at the time, which is, I, I found out later, is an illusion, 
is being your own boss, you know? <laughs> what an illusion that is, you know? Very overrated. This idea of being your own boss, being able to make the decisions. And, uh, but, uh, but, you know, I, I did, so we decided to take the risk. For us, it was an audacious move uh, <laughs> at the time. And, um, you know, when, I, uh, when we first moved back to Albuquerque in 1983, we had lots of, I had lots of ambition. I, I kind of looked at myself as being this uh, young hotshot. Uh, who just graduated from I Know It All University in California, <laughs> who's going to take the, the company to the next level. And, um, you know, we really worked very hard for the first couple of years, and we grew very rapidly. Uh, I, I just immersed myself in the job, and I thought nothing about putting in 60, 70, 80 hour weeks in order to make things happen. Uh, however, one flip side to this was that, um, you know, being a very young, ambitious, manager who knew it all. Um, I wasn't a leader worth following <laughs> back then. And I had a lot of people quit on me, and I was wondering why uh, at the time. <laughs> so I had lots of turnover, lots of turnover, and, and it kind of created a vicious cycle because as people would quit on me, I had to cover for them, and it just kind of would exacerbate the problem where putting in extra hours and extra hours at, at the studio. So uh, this began to take a toll on our marriage. Um, during the first couple of years, we moved out of this. Our first studio was on um, uh, the street on Central Avenue between Montclair and Morningside. And at, at that time, it was not a very healthy place to be. Uh, you know, we, had, we were trying to be a family photography studio when they had a gay bar in the corner and lots of prostitutes walking up in front yeah. of our studio. Uh, during the daytime. So we, we, we were happy to move out of that location and we opened up uh, two new locations within a, uh, a two year period of time. This was our studio on uh, Girard near Indian School. And um, this, uh, this location had a basement where we put our own color lab. So we had our own color lab. We uh, opened up two new studios all within a two year period of time. Uh, however, I was working like crazy during this time and it took a, a toll on my marriage. This, uh, this porch was taken about three years into our marriage. This was before my, my grandma called me fat. But, uh, <laughs> this, is, this is, I don't know, 20, 28 years ago and 40 pounds ago, I guess is the best way to put it. But, um, you know, there was lots of stress on our marriage. And one of the things that Judy would tell me was that um, she was starting to feel neglected with all of my long hours of work uh, putting in tons and tons of time with it. Uh, one of the things that she told me that uh, I kind of resented was she said, you know, of all the things in our life, you put work first, uh, you put your own uh, family second, your, your blood relative second, uh, you put your sports third, uh, you put your other friends fourth, you put the dogs fifth, and I'm lucky to come in sixth or, 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 or worse. And I really, really resented that when she was telling me that because you know I was I was justifying it I was saying I'm working this hard to you know improve our future uh, plus I thought that she needs to rate the dogs a little higher than, than she did, so. so I really I really resented that so uh, uh, it all came to head ten years into our marriage and uh, what happened was I, I I got home and she had moved out it was the most shocking. Uh, night of my life because this was, this is not me, but this is how I felt. It was a night of despair. Um, I remember just, just being completely broken and in despair this night. I, I stayed up the whole night weeping uncontrollably and uh, just, you know, the thought of, of the woman that I married um, saying, I don't want to be with you anymore, just really finally hit me like a ton of bricks. And um, I remember getting down on my knees in the middle of the night and doing something that I hadn't done since I was a kid. And I prayed. I prayed to God for the first time since I was a, a kid. And I just said, Lord, I've made a mess of this. Uh, I don't know what to do. If you're out there, please help me. Um, so that was the beginning of the Lord finally softening my heart to the point where he could work on me. Uh, 